top five groups that could determine a team's season. These are teams, some are trying to climb out of the, the basement, some are trying to get better, uh, some are trying to get back to the, the mountaintop. So, but position groups that could uh, kind of swing the season one way or the other. I love the national championship trophy. Is that is that and that is that Emery? Yes. He, yeah, very nice Emery. Emery did that. All we never say Emery, like that trophy? Emery, Jack. No, I'm not a big fan of the trophy. I just like the way it stands out like that. Uh, Jack, of course, Levi's not, and, and Jacob in the background with Garrett Ross as well. I don't, uh, I miss the crystal football. I, I thought the crystal football yeah, was no. awesome. But, but I, I just know. thought the way that, that almost looks like the old something back in the day, like it's, I don't know, something music. Yeah, I mean, it's like they opted for something they could just hand around to people. Let me tell you something, to... I wouldn't turn it down if it was given to No, me. but like, yeah, I just, I miss the old one. Number five, Clemson's offensive line. Uh, I If this unit gets better, then it stands to reason that uh, DJ Uagalele gets better, uh, or Kate Klubnik uh, will be fine, but probably DJ. Uh, this was a group that you know lost some starters from the year before and didn't bounce back like you would have thought they would have. But uh, you know everybody takes dips, and but this was you know if you want to know the the reason that, that Clemson struggled when they did last year, it was pretty much because they didn't have the depth in the offensive line that they have through this fantastic run that Dabo Sweeney's put together. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's interesting because it seemed like last year was down year for them, but most people, they'd, they'd embrace that forever. And it, it, could affect the, it could affect the quarterback play or not. I mean, it, if, it, if they protect the quarterback, those guys are talented enough to get things done. I'm still going to be serious. How, what is the over-under on Klubnik taking over Klubnik. that job? Klubnik. Klubnik, he should be taking over that job. Uh, I would say if they lose early on, you know, to somebody – I mean, that NC State game might be the swing. Cause that's, I mean, I think it depends a lot on how yeah. the quarterback played. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, how, how does how does the well, start? Well, that's why I brought it up. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I wouldn't have brought it up. No, right. I'm, I'm just saying, I guess it just depends on how, you know, how it goes in front of him. Yeah. And, I and, mean, I think that's how it typically goes for backup yeah. quarterbacks. Are they, are they winning like they did last year where their defense is so great and the offense gets it just barely done? Or, you know, because that could change it. Is the offensive line still a problem? Because if the offensive line is still a problem, do you put, Cade, matter. Do you put Cade back yeah. there and, and sacrifice him up? So I mean, if, if DJ Ugalele is playing well. Yeah, he's, he's not going to lose okay, the Okay, if DJ yeah. Ugalele is playing terribly and part of the reason why they're losing games or close to losing games – there you go. And Cade Klubnik's going to be your quarterback. What was his biggest problem last year? Was it the offensive Turn line? No, it was turnovers. Oh, turnovers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, I think he had 16 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. I mean, that's not that's not how you, you're supposed to be a quarterback at Clemson right now. Number four, Texas A&M quarterbacks. Uh, look, it's probably going to be Haynes King, but it could be Max Johnson. It could be, they, you know, and Jimbo's going to drag this out for dramatic effects, but I think he probably already has an idea who it's going to be. But... This was a team that was eight and four last year and due in large part to the play of their backup quarterback, Zach Calzada. They didn't have Haynes King for the majority of the year. And that's why they were eight and four in a couple of games. Now Calzada also helped them win the biggest game they've had in, in years at college station, but uh, he also helped them lose some games. So this is going to, this, this is the position that's going to swing them this year to being what they've been for a long time or taking that next step. Oh, yeah, or just remaining, yeah, I mean, yeah, remaining where they are wouldn't be, like, the worst thing in the world, but uh, it would be frustrating, I would imagine. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, they're not top 10 because of quarterback play. They're top 10 for every other reason, um, and this is their big wild card. So, yeah, whoever emerges from this, I mean, I'm an East Texas guy, so it'd be cool to see Haynes King win that job, but I know it's been sort of a rocky start for him coming off that injury. Um I would think he'd be the logical choice to be the, the next guy, but you never know with Max Johnson. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated to see who Jimbo picks here. Haynes yeah. King was good as a sophomore. We saw him in that playoff game we did with Midway, the classic game. He was fantastic as a junior. But his senior year, man, he turned the ball over quite a bit. And uh, you wonder if that was because he lost a lot of weapons around him and they weren't as good. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if he could protect the football uh, for Texas A&M. Yeah. Number three, Ohio State's defensive line. Uh, this is the reason that they weren't playing for national championship last year because of losses to Oregon and Michigan. And, uh, you know, really, and, and, and got bullied up against other teams, even though they won, that ran right at them. Uh, you would stand to think that Jim Knowles can get this thing locked up and sealed up pretty well uh, because, you know, if it's not a talent issue, but 
the Ohio State defensive line is going to make the difference to me on whether this is a really good offensive team that loses a couple games and does what they did last year or is what most people think they were and we playing in the CFP again. Yeah, that game with Oregon off the top was just stunning. And then to see Michigan ram it right down their throats, which Michigan was obviously very, very good. That's that's guy that had to be on the wall in front of their lockers, all of that, whatever the yardage they gave up against those two teams. Yeah, Michigan for the first time in a very long time took the soul right out of out of Ohio State. And that doesn't you don't just get it right back. I mean, you have to build it back up, but uh, they're so talented on offense uh, that you know, it wouldn't take, it's not going to take a lot for them to all of a sudden be, you know, passable on defense. But this is a unit that last year didn't play well. Number two. Hold on, you got oh. anything on Ohio State? Yeah. One of the things that because they had their guts taken out, it's not going to be like what happened to Nebraska against Colorado in 2001. That took out the heart and soul of that program. They'll bounce back. But, boy, that was devastating. But, but, yeah, but they still, I mean, they still got to play these teams. They still, you know, if they show that same weakness, people are going to still come right at them. But Jim Knowles, this is kind of on you, on him. Uh, number two, uh, the Texas offensive line. Like, as much as has been made about their skill positions, I could probably also have put slash defensive line. Although, this is a team that's going to take positive steps forward probably first on offense before they do on defense. So, you can have all the skilled players in the world. And I know they lost Isaiah Naor, but if they don't give Quinn Ewers or Hudson Card – time just like Clemson it's not going to matter they're not going to they might you know get back to a bowl game but they're not going to contend for the title if this line doesn't knock people around and right now we haven't seen any evidence that that that's going to get better and we'll have to wait to the season but this is something that swings for them and uh something that Steve Sarkeesian really needs yeah I mean uh, like you said they've got all the skill guys in the world so it's going to be all about blocking and protecting whoever that quarterback is I'm fascinated to see if it's yours or card and then we can kind of go from there um, but yeah I would think that at at least a uh, bare minimum you got to have a quarterback who's got his head on a swivel and ready to run on a moment's notice because there's a good chance that uh, he's going to be running a little bit this season because as much as they paid for a freshman offensive line and I'm not even saying that as a knock it's just you know that's what it was and as much as they retooled things I mean it's still the pressing issue and you can't just have you know freshmen just immediately the assumption being, oh, they'll just come in, they'll just be blocking great right away. I mean, I know there's been some positive reviews on a couple of their guys, but, you know, the injury earlier this week obviously hurts their depth, it hurts their experience. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be a real key for them and, and will probably be the, the deciding factor in, you know, which direction of the – with the fork in the road they go. There's a reason why they brought in all those new offensive linemen, all the kids, all the freshmen, all the pups, and, and they needed that desperately and that – that collective was huge and perfect timing for that as well. So, okay, you want to take a guess what number one is? Don't put it up yet. You want to take a guess? No, I, I don't know what it is. All right. Number one, the Nebraska special teams. Oh I think God. more than the offense and the defense, honestly, more than the offense and the defense, this is what swung their season into them not taking a step forward last year. Look, they win three or four more games if they could just do the fundamentals of punting, kicking, extra points, and field goals. Uh, and kick coverage and at, punt coverage. At the end of the half, when you stop somebody, that you're, you're kind of taking it to. Uh, a little bit, especially on defense and giving your defense some momentum, don't um, not decide to fair catch a ball and yeah. then run and try to catch it at the two-yard line. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Uh, don't um, miss 19-yard field goals. Don't, you know. They had a punt block. It was at the end of the uh, – early on in the third quarter against Iowa when they, they had the – comf they were comfortable. It was 7 or 10, 14 points. Blocked a punt early, and that just – they never I, recovered. I can tell you that – Punt return against well, Michigan State they allowed at the end of the game that tied it. Without without uh, the statistics in front of me, I can tell you if you just get the punt away, yeah, 37 yards away from where you are, yeah. you have a much better chance of stopping them than you do if you let them block it. Drives me nuts because – I don't know if any – I know that uh, Virginia Tech uh, uh, Beamer was incredible. But I don't know of anyone who spent more time and was more anal about what they did with special teams than Tom Osborne was at Nebraska across the board. And Frost played for him, and what they've had at special teams has been embarrassing. And they have a coach now, the coaches, the special teams because of it. Bill Bush, I think he's from LSU. Yeah, so there you go. That's the top five. All right, uh, one quick note. I saw this on uh, the Rivals 